Hello, everybody. This is Tom Eckert here. You're listening to my podcast, Numerology, a GPS for the soul. This is your place to learn about the true power of numerology and how to use it to bring out the best in yourself, understand your loved ones better, take wise decisions, and prepare for your future. In other words, how to live your life aligned with your true destiny. Take your time to educate yourself and share these podcasts with your friends and family so they too can enjoy the great benefits of numerology. Enjoy! Hello to my wonderful, wonderful listeners. I'm so excited. As always, I always say that. But honestly, today, the reason I'm excited is because this episode is going to be a yearly uh, global forecast for 2022. And as a matter of fact, I've been doing these forecasts for quite a while. Um, but my podcast, my, my podcast is, is um, rather new, so I've never uploaded, you know, um, my, my forecasts for previous years. These are uh, uh, things you can read in my blog on my blog, on my website. So just if you're interested, for example, in 2021 and so on. For those of you who are new, uh, this podcast is a place of discussion about numerology uh, as a path for inner transformation, okay? How to use numerology for inner growth, for a deeper self-understanding so that we can actually grow inwardly, grow spiritually, and, and how to make numerology accessible for us uh, and applicable for everyday matters. A couple of things, uh, if you're a new listener, that you should know about my podcast. First of all, if you want to get a numerology reading, if it's something you haven't tried before, you're really welcome to contact me through my website link. Um, And if you want to study numerology in a more methodical, in a more self-paced way, then check out my self-study course. Now, some of you might want to study numerology in depth and that's where I offer one-on-one studies with me and all the info is on my website and the link is provided in the episode description and the last thing I want to tell you is that there is a secret episode um, in my podcast I'm not going to tell you which it's a little game I like to to play and it holds a coupon that's exclusive only to my podcast listeners and it holds a 65% discount for my online self-study course. So just go ahead, uh, listen to my uh, podcast episodes and find out where that coupon is and enjoy it. Okay, having said all of that, let us begin with today's episode. So I'm probably going to, you know, talk in a rather spontaneous manner. I mean, I usually do that, okay? I rather talk, I always talk pretty spontaneously, but today, you know, because I have notes here and there about all kinds of like insights about the year, so forgive me if I stop from time to time. Wow, there's a lot to say. I mean, first of all, let's start by kind of saying that the last year, 2021, we've been in a five global year. Now, it's been a very... um messier to say the least least. I mean a very uh, unpredictable feeling uh, a very unstable ground I think many of us felt that many things are unclear okay and 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 that can be part of the energy of five but not five uh, on its own right so if you want to know a bit more I really recommend you go into my website go to my blog um, and just search for the for the um article where I wrote down the the forecast for 2021. So after this year, after the five, we are entering a year six, globally speaking. Okay. Now the energy is very different between five and six. Okay. In many, in many ways, they are diametrically opposed, very different energy. And you're going to see that. Now I'm going to try to depict the picture as balanced as possible because, you know, as I always like to say, numerology is never a promise. It's a possibility a probability and it's a mixture of everything is written and there is free will so that's kind of how it goes now the coming year one of the main topics that we're gonna be you know faced with is a very 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 strong calling for us as a collective 
to heal. So, so there's, there's, there's really, you know, something that wants us to come together. How do I know that? Well, if you just look at the number 2022, you see the, 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 the enormous amount of twos, okay? Now, since the year 2000, we've already kind of shifted into that two energy, which is always kind of leading in the thousands position. But 2022, it's like we have three twos, right? And those three twos make up a six together because there's two plus zero plus two plus two. So there's a lot of calling for healing, those two numbers, two and six, and a lot of calling globally to come together as a human community, right? We need to find deeper deeper emotional maturity together. We need to find deeper, deeper cooperation regarding personal and global events, right? So it's like there was this turbulent weather of the previous five year, and now we are yearning to find a deeper form of stability, a deeper form of harmony. So the thing is that the the many twos and even the zero in the 2022 tell us that this harmony, this stability that we are looking after, looking for, and we are striving for, and we'll be kind of like called to move into, can only be manifest if we find it in ourselves to significantly and wholeheartedly heighten our sensitivity, our sense of cooperation, our true care to one another, right? So whatever we manifest this year will only bear positive fruits if we do it from a place of emotional connection. In other words, from the heart, right? So that's really, really important to understand about this year. In many ways, this year is a kind of connecting point between two major energetic centers inside of us, one being the heart chakra and one being the root chakra. And this is very much related to the number six and also the number two. So that means that basically whatever we are going to create socially, interpersonally, politically, okay, whatever, whatever, on any domain, it's like it calls us to first of all listen deep to our hearts, okay? Listen to that voice within that is sensitive, that is caring, that tells us what's truly important, what's good, what's truly nourishing for the long run. And once that becomes clearer and clearer, then we will be called to manifest that, to ground it, right? To, to, to ground that gentle, caring, um, thoughtful heart voice through actual emotional and material actions. You see the, the two energy that is so dominant this year and that produces a six, right? It's, it's an energy that always takes into account the other side of the coin, which means that we have to see each other. We cannot just think about ourselves. It's like the least egoic time, right? In many ways, it's like this year says, guys, this is not time to be stuck in your egos, okay? This is time to come together. And that brings me to the to the next topic I want to say, which is, you know, this is such a, an amazing time to to come together with those that are that you love, right? To to come together with friends, to 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 be close to family, to be close to your community. And remember, the it, it there are bigger and bigger circles of community, and, and the biggest circle is the world, right? The entire of humanity. We are one big human community, and that's part of the message of this year. In order for us to thrive, we must kind of include all the levels of community. We, we must come close with our friends, our family, the community around us, and remember that we are part of the human community. So we have to kind of have in mind the, the best interest of humanity and, and, and try not to base it on 
for example, our undealt with emotions, angers, frustrations, because that can cause us to kind of like project an emotional need of ours individually onto the collective. And that's really not what this year is asking of us. It's asking of us to put aside our personal egos and actually think about us, the collective. And that's part also of the healing, right? The coming together. Now, an interesting aspect that we're going to see during this um, six year is, as I kind of mentioned, the healing. But what I mean by that is like the six and the two very often what they do is that they somehow bring to the surface many emotions okay so again i'm talking about a collective kind of um wave that is going to to um affect us all which can mean that many of us are, are going to feel all kinds of deep emotions that have been kind of buried deep within and will rise to the surface all kinds of tears that you know, that want to be cried, pains that we carried on our hearts that want to be listened to, right? It's like, it's almost like a time for a collective therapy. And we will need each other this year, right? We will need each other for this healing. As I already said, our friends, our families, our community, to just realize that we're together, we're together in this boat, we're in the same boat. Togetherness is key to become stronger this year the word togetherness 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 I, i'm going to repeat it a lot that's kind of like a, a a key word for this year we we may feel and i'm pretty sure we are going to feel very um emotionally vulnerable sensitive maybe even extra sensitive this year right so i mean while this can be uh, a bumpy emotional ride, part of it, it can also be a deep dive into our sensitive nature, our caring nature, our tender parts. So there's also a deep beauty that becomes available to us this year, right? So this really is a numerological year that is unique in its invitation to heighten our sensitivity muscle as a collective. Mutual helpfulness is really in high demand, right? And, and any kind of like aggressive, abrupt, violent, insensitive, inconsiderate type of behavior, behavior will be felt um, in triple strength, right? So we're, everything is going to like, whoa, it's, it's going to feel really off while, while we're in this current six year. So really... I, I do recommend if you feel you need therapy, right? Go at it. If you need, need help, go for it. If you need release, please give it to yourself. It's it's a time to unload in order to heal, in order to come together. So we need the 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 the, the six year calls us for a more mature sense of responsibility for one another, right? And 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 it's a call for maturation. Now, by and large, and again, those of you who kind of got to know me, I'm a, how would I say, I, I, I tend to be very critical, okay? That's simply, I guess, part of my love of wisdom, right? You can kind of not close your eyes towards, towards reality, but humanity, by and large, doesn't like to be responsible. People like to, to, to feel victimized, to feel entitled, to complain, to be self-righteous, to, to point the finger at someone else. But this six year, along with all those twos and the zero, which heightens that spiritual element, is really telling us, guys, I mean, connect to yourself and take responsibility for your emotions. And come together. There's no one to point a finger at. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. So let's see. Let's see what's our next point. Um, I think one of the things I want to talk about that is also very um, prevalent and is going to be felt this year is like this sense of 
an undefined future. There's still this feeling that we don't know what's about to come. And it's almost like this future that is waiting for us to define it. It's like this, you know, like this empty canvas and, and, and we are to take the responsibility to, to, to kind of like fill it with, with the future that we truly want to create. Now, for many of us, and, and, and understandably so, it can be really scary. It can be frightening. I mean, not knowing, you know, what's to come. Not knowing, you know, what, what, what lies ahead. But from a different perspective, right? From another angle, it's a wonderful opportunity. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to say, hey, like this empty canvas means we can actually create a future. A future that we want, that, 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 that means something to us, that touches us. And we can do it together. Right? Remember togetherness. And just, you know, if you're if you like numerology, which I guess you do if you're listening to this podcast, you know, the way I I see that we don't have a fully defined future is actually not through the numbers of the 2022 in the normal way that you would think, but actually through a method called the arrows of Pythagoras. This is a really it's a bit of a more advanced method. I teach that to my students in more advanced courses. But you can see, by the way, just kind of like in in, in parenthesis, if you want to read my uh, yearly forecast for 2022, you can also check it out in my my blog on my website. So you can kind of like see it also written down. Maybe for some of you, it's kind of like it's easier or complimentary. You can see... Um, the arrows of Pythagoras visually, so you can see kind of what I'm talking about. But let me tell you that for those of you who know a little bit or for those of you who want to go ahead and read a bit more about uh, those um, arrows of Pythagoras after you listen to this podcast, there are two empty planes that I want to talk about. And one of them is the empty plane of the 147 and the other one is the empty plane of the 789. Now, both of them kind of tell me that our future and our ground is in some way undefined. Okay. Um, the the empty one four seven, which usually stands for grounding, right? For a solid earth. It's like a solid physical plane is empty. And it means energetically that we kind of still feel like we're standing on air, right? Like there's nothing clear or solid to stand upon. And that shows me that, right, we need to create the ground. And that stands kind of a little bit in contrast to the six energy, which six is a grounded energy. You see, six is a connection between emotion and ground. But that what, that's really what tells me that we need to create that ground, right? It's not there ready for us to step on. We need to create that ground. There was... There's a whole world crisis going around and, and most of us, 50 years old and younger, even a little bit older than 50 years old, have not experienced a world crisis ever in our life. And it's understandable that there's fear. It's understandable that there's uncertainty and people have all kinds of mixed feelings and emotions and conclusions, whatever. But the bottom line, there's a feeling of uncertainty and we are called to create a healthier ground. That's, a, that's the potential, Right. Um, so in many ways, this empty plane of 147 sends a message to us and it tells, it tells us to plug into a deeper, subtler inner resources, more spiritual in essence, and to rebuild our foundations on all levels, on all levels from a much wiser and a much more inspired level of being, right? We will probably, probably feel a lot of disappointment and disillusionment from from social structures that have been with us for decades, centuries, maybe, maybe even longer. But, and please remember what I'm going to say now, we need to not get stuck in wallowing over this or over the past. We need to come together. We need to be grounded. We need to cry the tears that need to be cried but we need to reform our values and as a result, our actions and social social structures. Now, you see, the thing with a six-year 
is that the shadow side can pull us to focus too much on the past. It's like what has been and the world that has been in the past before the pandemic and, you know, and be, many, many people feel a lot of mistrust, okay? Because of this world crisis, it kind of brings up very primordial feelings, okay? And I don't want to judge anybody. I'm just stating like a certain fact. We see that. There's a lot of fear, mistrust, and so on. And I'm saying... Instead of looking back at before the pandemic, at what, what has been as if we ruined our world or we are ruining our world, no, just don't look at the past. What has been has been. Just come together to form a better future. And that's really, really important. Now, the, the empty plane of the 7, 8, and 9 in the arrows of Pythagoras really, you know, shows me very directly that the future is uncertain because that that specific plane okay energetic plane in the arrows of pythagoras deals with future energy and when there when there are no numbers appearing in this plane it's like it's as if we are you know like we have no picture of what's coming right we don't know what's 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 what what's kind of like there's nothing defined in other words okay but the potential is that because there's nothing defined, we can fill in the void with anything we want. And that's the beauty. That's the beauty, right? So on the one hand, it's not defined, which can cause like this feeling, of, okay, there's nothing ready that's waiting for us, but we can make it what we want. We can make it exactly what we want it to be. Okay, let's see what else I want to say. I'm kind of like scrolling through my notes and 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 I just want to yeah okay here's a good point okay that's wonderful so you know one more thing that stands out in in the arrows of pythagoras is how much twos are centered in in the two slot in that kind of grid of the arrows of pythagoras and this shows that in 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 many ways like we need to ask ourselves during this year whether we feel safe, whether we feel at home, whether we feel good with ourselves, whether we are attuned to what really does good to us. This year is going to be an invitation to be more resourceful and more accurate with what's truly, truly healthy for us. And remember, we are talking collectively. This is not a personal yearly forecast. This is a global yearly forecast, my dears. So this pertains to all of us. It's like I, as, as, as an organ right, of humanity, as, as an extension of the body of this one humanity, am I truly aware of what's healthy for us? What does good to us? Right, And this is going to be something that we need to ask ourselves this year. We need to kind of like, it's a little bit like coming back into the sense of our own home within ourselves as humanity. It's like instead of all this rush, rush, rushing somewhere, doing this, doing that, reacting here, reacting to that, jumping here and jumping there. Just for a moment, you know, stop and ask ourselves what truly does good to us, right? We must also remember when there's an intensification of the two slot in the arrows of Pythagoras that we, mu we must make sure that we're not becoming too selfish, forgetting the collective, right? We must remember that context, right? Only thinking about me, me, me is going to be the, the wrong approach this year. So us is the code. Us is the code. Another interesting thing is that there's a six appearing in the in the um, arrows of Pythagoras. And to me, that really shows that throughout the last two years of the pandemic, of the world crisis, we did accumulate some knowledge, some experience, some information. We, we gathered all kinds of you know, information through study, through experience, through research, and I believe that 
this will start to 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 yield results during this six year during 2022 because it's a bit like it tells me that energetically we're in a place that out of all the bits and pieces of information and experiences we are starting to kind of you know all the different opinions and so on we're starting to build a solid body of knowledge of understanding about the pandemic about the world crisis and there will emerge a more organized more coherent you know understanding and body of knowledge of how to handle it and how to make it good for us right so so and 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 we are all part of it so it's kind of like there will be there is there will be a clearer sense of understanding of how the virus works what to do about it and that's good news that's wonderful news Wow, a lot to say. Now, there's also something that I usually check when I check, um, you know, the um, the global yearly forecast. And it's like not only the year 2022, but, you know, the specific kind of entry portal, which is the 1st of January, right? 2022. And that actually sums up to an eight, which is Cool. It's kind of like, I call it like the secondary life path of the year. And I like to look at it because it gives me some extra insight um, about like the energetic um, or, or let's say it, it it shows me some additional influence, energetic influence that will affect the six years, some extra directionality. And in the case of the eight, this specific frequency shows me that as a collective, we really want to move forward. We want to find solutions to problems and we really want to progress, which is great, which is really good news. You know, the, the six and the eight together are very um, grounded and very capable. And that's good. It means that we have the possibility this year to to progress, to move forward, to to apply our knowledge, to to make it real. Um, and there's also a balance between six and eight, which is the balance of practicality, being pragmatic, but also being connected emotionally, right? So we want to see results this year on a practical, on a practical, on a tangible level. So in, 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 in a way, all the healing, the togetherness, the sensitivity and everything that I've already mentioned, it wants to turn into something concrete, something useful. So in in a way, what we need to be careful of with all the twos that I mentioned, the six, and now also the eight, all of them are even numbers. And the, the shadow of having too many even numbers is that we can sometimes overlook the potential for revolution and be too much stuck in dogmatic thinking, stuck in convention, holding on to kind of like what's known, Okay. But that's not the calling of the year, right? The calling is more connecting to subtler places of sensitivity, healing, and not looking into the past, but into creating our future together and progressing. That's our focus. So um, if we will embrace the six energy, the eight energy in a harmonious manner, I believe that we will surely see solid progress in emotional, social, economical, medical frontiers, and maybe others as well, right? When I look at the two and the six, I see the potential for emotional healing, like progress on that uh, domain. And when I look at the six and the eight, I see the potential progress on the more physical level. Wow, I, I feel like I said so much. I just want to quickly take a look at my notes to see that I actually didn't, you know, miss anything. Um, you know, don't don't be surprised if a little bit, you know, the twos, the sixes may, will make you feel a little bit kind of like oversensitive, that some defense mechanisms don't work as much as they used to. It's normal. It's okay. It's part of a healing process. Sometimes it's going to feel overwhelming, but just rest assured that it's a healing it's a, it's like a, it's like a global therapy and it's good it's really good so just with patience with openness also a new potential arises like an opportunity for spiritual growth and as i said like a deeper sense of togetherness and that's great that's really really great 
we need to use the power of friendship, right? That that power of community to to strengthen us all together. My friends, wow, I see that it's already getting long, this episode, and um, let, let's try to just put it shortly all together. So if I kind of try to sum it up, I'm going to say that this coming year of 2022 is definitely an important year as far as healing and human maturation is concerned on an emotional level, but also on a practical level. It's definitely an important time, a potent time to take inventory about the place of love, friendship, community, and cooperations in our lives. And if all of these are not present, then this is a wonderful time to introduce all of these elements into our lives. Now, from all the details, all my notes, all the numbers I've checked, numerologically speaking, I do believe that we are about to lay a more solid foundation for our future as a collective. As I said in the beginning, this is never a 100% promise, but that is my estimation based on all the numbers that I see. So remember to, to take time to feel what needs to be felt, to cry what needs to be cried, and to appreciate what needs to be appreciated. And please don't do it alone. Don't get stuck on the past. Feel, process, and move on. So 2022 is about learning from the past while building the future from a much more connected and sensitive place. So my dears, that is all for today's episode for for this um, yearly forecast, and I really hope it inspires you. Now, I would really love to hear more about your experience with numerology and with this forecast. And that's why I started posting questions in my episodes. Um, They are visible for the time being only if you listen to the podcast on Spotify. And I would love to see your answers because it just, you know, I, I, I read your answers and it helps me know where you're coming from, how you connect to numerology. And it really helps me improve you know, my episodes for you. Um, and that's and that's great. And again, just to remind you, if you want a numerology reading, if you want to uh, uh, study numerology in a self-paced way with my online course, or if you want to study numerology in depth, one-on-one with me, you can really check all of those in the link that's provided in the episode description. And last but not least, do search for the secret episode that holds a 65% off discount coupon that is only exclusive for my podcast listeners for my online numerology course. My friends, I wish you a wonderful, wonderful and blessed uh, new year. And I will see you as always in the next episodes. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, and you want to go deeper into numerology, check out my website, tom-eckert.com. You can also book a numerology reading or even study numerology yourself through my courses. I'll see you in the next episode.